Uh, listed homes and homes within conservation areas represent a small but important part of the UK's housing stock. And that these buildings are really important to our rich national heritage. And they also provide uh, uh, enormous economic and social benefits to both local residents and tourists alike. But then old historic buildings aren't exactly the best when it comes to energy efficiency. I mean, they're very expensive to run. It's very difficult to retrofit them because they're listed. A listed building means it's protected for future generations. It means you can't even change a screw that holds a hinge on a door. You've got to be really, really careful, which is a good thing. But like smaller and, and cheaper houses, the use of renewable energy can really help reduce those bills and reduce the impact that these buildings have. So we're here today at Athelhampton House in Dorset to see how this Grade 1 listed Tudor Manor has become one of the UK's first net zero conservation projects. Welcome to the Everything Electric Show. Our three free YouTube channels on EVs and clean tech are funded by our fun packed test drive tastic events in Farnborough, London, the Southwest, the North, Melbourne, and Sydney. And next up, we're in Canada for Everything Electric Vancouver. And new for UK viewers, you can now buy a battery EV and much more at everythingelectric.store. So, this is the main old hall of Athelhampton House. And this site is where the original, original building was, was put up. This is long before this was built. Uh, this, and this, is, this, this building is listed in the Doomsday Book. Well, the Doomsday Book was written after the Norman Conquest of 1066. This building is brand new. This was built in 1486. It's a stunning room with a hammer beam roof. It's the original roof. It is, it's got this wonderful linen fold panelling on the walls. It's got a painting of Henry VIII over there. It's his era. I mean, no one knows if Henry VIII came here. I don't think he did, but he was around at the time this was built and put together. It's the most extraordinary room. And over its lifetime, this has been heated, it's just because this is what we're talking about here, heated by every method you could possibly do. So obviously, big fire, burn half a tree a day just to keep it warm. Uh, then the Victorians put in these trenches down either side and there's hot radiator pipes in those and the heat would have come up from those a bit. Well, they've been replaced and replaced. That would have been fired originally by coal or logs and then gas and then, uh, you know, more recently LPG and that's all gone and now it's heated by heat pumps. So, Charles, tell me about this house. When did you move here? When, how long have you been here? Well, I've been here pretty well six years now. Right. Yes, yes. And, I mean, what's fascinating is you've made... The, I just want to know what made you make the decision to change the way this building runs, the energy that, that it used? Because the, the original statistics were quite stark of how much oil and gas this place got through. Obviously, the bill was a very big, the, the, the energy bill was one very big thing. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, we had, I think, something like six different gas boilers located around wow. the place. They all needed to be maintained. They all seemed to be falling apart. We had a horrible old emergency diesel generator as backup. Right. So the infrastructure was, it was a little bit on the way out. But I think there was also just a, a sort of desire to... To, to move ahead and into the modern age, yeah. really. So you've had to deal with the fact you, you've got to produce enough heat, basically, to heat a house that is as insulated as a, you know, a shed in your garden. I mean, it's not well insulated at all, is it? That, that's pretty much right. Yeah. Maybe slightly better than the shed, yeah. but, but point taken. Yeah. And so, no, you want lots of cheap energy. Right. And, and that's really the big objective, because so many of these old houses you go to, they're freezing yes, cold. Yes, that's the, that's the thing you always think when you walk. And that was, I just want to say to, to everyone watching this, we walked in through the door here and we went, oh, it's really warm. Because your expectation of going into old buildings is, it's, <laughs> I better get my coat. Well, I tell you, that's bad for the people in the building. It's also bad for the fabric right, of the building be, yeah. as well. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So can you run through then what you, what you went through uh, and the, the sort of thought processes behind what do we do here? How do we replace all these gas boilers and the gas and the, the diesel generator and all those things? What, what do we need to do? So, I mean, I think, Really, pretty well, right from the beginning, I said, well, look, let's just go the full Monty. Right. We're going to get rid of the gas completely. Um, and it was actually amazing when they lifted the gas the tanks big out. Tank. Yeah. Um, we're going to get rid of the gas. We're going to get rid of the diesel. Um, and we're going to have solar power. And the solar power will drive heat pumps right. uh, through underfloor heating, trench heaters, 
get rid of the radiators by and large, which were cluttering up the walls. Oh, so there the... were, someone had installed like hot radiator, uh, wet radiators. They were wet radiators, right. but they were all run off these gas boilers. Right. And, and I say run off, but nobody could afford to right. actually yeah. run them. Yeah. So most of the time they weren't working. Yeah. So we had a cold house, ugly radiators, uh, and an enormous bill. Right. And so we'd gone down the road, yep, solar, heat pumps, but also the batteries, uh, which allow you to, of course, absorb the, uh, the lovely solar energy in the day and, yep. and it, all the rest of it. Yeah. Right. right. So, Stefan, can you tell me what, what your role has been on this project? Because it's the more I see, the more I'm impressed with it. So it's, it's amazing what you've done. Yeah, we, were, we were appointed as lead designers um, and project managers, essentially. So we're, we're architects in space. And we were tasked with bringing together the strategy and gaining the permissions and then thereafter procuring it. Right. Because uh, I'm assuming then the permission for changing a building of this age is quite a major task it's not like we've you know i've got a 90 a building that was built in 1972 no one really cares what you do with it exactly um exactly fortunately the client was very very good and listened to our advice um we brought in historic england from the outset right um and and really let them buy into the scheme help determine locations of where things might go that we knew were less sensitive and they could come on board to that hence why the solar is you know, 100 metres in either direction from the house. Right. Um, so so we're, what we're in at the moment is effectively a sheep paddock. Yeah, it's That's when it's all... Uh, water meadow is the right. paddock, yeah. Um, so sheep graze here. Uh, it gets a bit boggy in the winter and the panels are elevated up so that that can continue. And then the heat pumps, just, it's extraordinary to see because I've seen like a heat pump outside a house. But they, what, how many, there's a 10? There's a bank of 10 and a bank of fives. 15 on the house alone um, and when they were brought here they were you know the absolute latest technology well, then you have got ground source heating as well and that's in yeah. in this field so we're standing on top of some exactly. pipes exactly so. so the ground source heat pumps service the coach house right uh, where the commercial activities are as well as um, the cottage on the site and and they are buried um, horizontally with um, ground collectors below us Right. which is perfect with the moving water through the ground as well, which replenishes the heat. I mean, our energy bills are give or take zero. Right, right. Um, because we do have to draw a bit of power from the grid in winter. Yeah. We give back quite a lot in summertime. Right. And so, I mean, it varies a little year to year, but I mean, they're very low. Yeah. 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 And so, I mean, because a lot of people are going to want, to want to know what the cost was of putting the whole system in. So, I mean, have you got those figures to hand, you do, roughly? I mean, it's the exact cost is all tied up with other projects yeah. that we did. But I mean, obviously, we are talking multiple hundreds of thousands. Right. Um, but I would say that because the energy bills have gone from enormous right. to pretty well nothing, we're probably going to have paid that back in about 10 years. Right. Which I think is it's incredible. It's a bargain, I think, actually. Because then for the next 20 years, your quid's in, effectively, aren't you? Absolutely, I mean, is, you are. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, hopefully, even at the end of your 20 years, 30 years, you know, it's not that the whole system is thrown right, away. No, yeah, you might need to replace, replace bits of it, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. 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 But also, I mean, the, just the very simple fact that, the, you know, the solar array that I've seen in the field, you know, those panels... 20 years ago would have cost a fortune. I mean, that would have been un unimaginably expensive to do. And now it's hugely cheaper. And in 10 years' time, we don't know, but I'm, it's not going to be more expensive. They're going to be less. I think that's a very important yeah. point. And I think we were lucky. It was a kind of sweet spot. Yes. The costs of the solar panels had come down. The, the heat pumps had just gone through a kind of generational leap right. from the old, expensive, noisy, yes. inefficient ones to just these really slick units, yeah. almost inaudible. I was standing next to them just now. I could not hear anything. I could hear birdsong. Yeah. But then, so you've got the, the ground source, you've got the air source heating, you've got the solar, you've got the batteries. The thing that I immediately think of with what, you know, just from the experience I've had with my house is insulation was like critically important, you know, that, and clearly you can't do that really, with a building like this. But have you been able to do any insulation in it? Yeah. Um, so the, the coach house has a thatched roof. We, you know, 
daft as that sounds, is an incredibly basic vernacular traditional material right. that allows a lot of insulation into the building. Yeah. Um, but the the main house is, has had quite a refurbishment through it. Right. That we also um, design and, and, and managed, and, and that includes the removal of concrete floors with lime creek floors that include uh, insulation within and lots of underfloor heating throughout the building, changing all the heat emitters, insulating between floors to sandwich heat Right, in, in between floors. Oh, right. Okay. Uh, rather than, you know, a new build. And that was a big, big thing in the retrofit. And what we and, and sort of many others learned from it was a new building, you, you try to insulate the exterior fabric of it yeah. and enclose the heat within that. Whereas here, you clearly can't insulate, you know, a 500-year-old stone wall with stone mullion windows and so forth. And, and the Great Hall roof uh, is is open up to the underside of the sarking boards. So... So we've insulated the floors as, as possible and the roof spaces that we had access to. And so what, what would you say was the, the single biggest challenge? I mean, you, you mentioned earlier on about the planning and the red tape yeah. around installing stuff like this. Was that? The red tape, yeah. I mean, the, the, planning, the planning process um, went relatively smoothly. Right. But I think that was largely down to the process we took um, in dealing with Historic England, getting the council uh, conservation team on board and then putting through the application. There was a lot of learning along the way as well. So it wasn't just one single application. We did so much in, in one application, then, then another. And just quickly, I mean, presumably there aren't a lot, there aren't precedents. There aren't, they don't go, oh, look what they did at Windsor Castle or Edinburgh Cup. No, they haven't done it. Some, some of the national organisations that run historic houses have spent millions of pounds on feasibility studies. Right. And something that the client uh, made very clear in the brief was that, you know, we're going to get on and make this project. Right. Um, and it was quite a pleasure to have a client say, look, I realize this hasn't been done before. I realize there's a risk it might not work, but we're going to have a damn good go at it. Right. The National Trust have been here. Historic Royal Palaces have been here. And actually, we've helped consult and give them some further advice also. Um a lot of organisations, you know, there's there's a National Trust property up the road that have now looked at, at putting in ground source um, heat pumps to theirs. Uh, there's a lot of historic estates now that realise you can look at a renewable strategy. It is possible. Um, it has to be designed carefully, but it can work. And it's proof here, yeah. you know, you've got a house that's over 500 years old um, that is now carbon zero. But actually, the longer it's here, it's going into carbon negative yes yeah yeah and what about uh, you know future plans have you got have you got things that you still want to want to achieve here well i mean one thing we did recently actually is we put in some car park chargers uh, EV I'm charging. using one right now oh, are yes. you fantastic yeah. Yeah. yes yes well i mean we thought in the really high summer well, or a great day like today, yeah. we've got lots of spare power. Yeah. Rather than sending it back to the grid, let our customers car. come and use it. Yeah. Why not? No word of a lie. It's definitely worth a visit if you're in, in the Dorset area. It's a beautiful house. So it's not just the energy system they've changed here at the house. They've also changed the way they run the garden. They don't use any pesticides and what they've noticed is a huge increase in not only insects and bugs and butterflies and bees and all that sort of thing but a, a big increase in bird song and birds there's lots more birds living here and as we saw uh, where the solar panels are because that field is not treated with anything it's completely organic field the moles come back they're moles they love a worm and so there's moles digging little, air, little tunnels all everywhere. And often in the past, people used to kill moles and say, oh, moles are ruining the lawn. They're not worried about it. You get mole hills, but they really turn the soil over and it's much better. It's just a nicer way of living on the land. So I think what we've seen here today is that there's really no building on the planet that can't benefit from having renewables, from having solar and batteries and ground source heat pumps and air source heat pumps. They're just, the technology is mature now, it makes sense. If they can do it in this four, 500 year old building with minimal insulation and it genuinely is warm and it costs so much less to run it than it used to, 
then you can do it anywhere. There's no excuse. It, you, there's always a way around these things. Now, clearly, they've spent a lot of money. They've got a big property to look after. It's a big project. There's no question of that. But as we heard, in 10, 20 years' time, this house is going to kind of run itself for nothing. It really is impressive. So, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this. I think it's been fascinating to see a building of this age benefiting from, you know, heat pumps. Who'd have thought? Definitely not me. Uh, please do tell your mates about the, the Everything Electric show. Please do subscribe if you haven't done already. And as always, if you have been, thank you for watching. Now visit electricvehicles.expert, where you can follow everything electric and keep current with Clean Technica, The Driven, Electric, and many more.